And they can talk to their white kids all they want. Them little crackers don't want us to live in no isolated up in Idaho with their mom and daddy talking about niggas because the niggas look like, whatever they do, they make it look like we having all the fun, right? They don't make no difference, they don't get no money, they get cheated, they get, that's okay. Boy, but the Negro going to make you think he having all the fun in the world. And then the white folks going to have it because they going to get all the money and he going to do all the dancing. But that's okay. So the marginalization of the races, that's automatic. And you can't stop them. You can't stop them. You look at white girls. Do they like uh, the yellow niggas? Absolutely not. They want the blackest nigga in town. Right? Tar babies. And the Negro, he won't do the whitest thing he can find. Not just regular white to tan real good, but the white, white people. You know, they got uh, that kind of problem. That's the way it is. They're going to mongrelize. You can't stop them. You know what I mean? So when you look at the world in a hundred years, the people are going to be really blended. That you're going to, it'll be fun to ask, hey, how, what's your mixture, man? And they'll be talking, man, man, my grandmother, she was Italian, and I have some Irish, and I have a little, I have a little Negro, an American Indian, and pretty soon you're going to be able to put in what you want, you know. I kind of know they do, but, yeah, the, but Negro was always the last thing they named. Right. <laughs> they, they'll say I'm all of this, and then, oh yeah. And then, oh yes, that's, and then that's the last one they name out of all of them. They do that now. But you'll almost be able to go up to a window and you, uh, oh, you go on the internet and say I want this, that, and the other, and you can list the backgrounds. Of they have that now. That's the yeah, they're telling you, designer. No, they have, yeah. no, they have it now. They yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. For all this, the mixed people, and only for mixed, it's all of this stuff, I'm telling you. And then, what the heck? I mean, what's wrong with it? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with it. That, that, that old black power slave, look, man, that's fine. I'm with you all the way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they, you know, and black power, the, the, the Negro, you look at slaves and you look at us, the Negro is about two or three. Man, I was at, what's the name? It must have been last year. I saw this black girl. She's the blackest thing I've ever seen. And I, I just went up to the car and I told her, I, was, I said, I'm not hitting on you or nothing. I just want to tell you that you are the most beautiful Blackest, and I use that term. I say, in our neighborhood, we used to have people like you. I saw, I told, I told her, she said, she was looking at me like, what is wrong with this nigga? But she was happy that some, because nobody never told her, you know, that that as black as you are, that's special, special, special. Because Negroes is brown now, they're not black. We're not black. I'm considered dark. I would have been considered light, almost yellow, years ago. I look at the old pictures of us. Hey, man, the Negro was black in those days, right? And then you done mixed us all up, and we get lighter. Don't go to California. You go to California every night, man alive. Hey, man, that is a long story. But here's the thing. All of that stuff that those people are fighting against, there's nothing they can do about it. They might as well just give up the fight and, and uh, you know, blend on in. Because their the children are not going to, they're not going to, they can't pass that hatred right. on to their kids. Their kids don't, I, I, yeah, maybe 2% or 5 right. but all that, Nazism and all that, and then they, I believe they blowing a lot of that up so everybody would be scared that that's taking over. I don't think that's taking over. I think it's going the other way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you remember the demonstrations we go through? Yeah. 
You can't brainwash all them kids. Half of them kids was out there, hey, glad. this is a party, good, happy to be here. With all the Negroes, we're part of the future. You know the stuff they tell them, and they believe that. The future of America. This is what America looks like. We believe in saying ourselves. I mean, you know, this is what America looks like. I listened to C-SPAN, <laughs> and uh, you know they had the people call in. Right. And one guy called in, and and his just like you were saying, his daughter was like. I want to go down there and protest. <laughs> and he said, what you going down there? Now they straight crap. Right. He said, what you going down there to protest for? You don't have, you haven't lived long enough to go <laughs> down there and protest. <laughs> but, but that's the exchange. I'm like, okay, this is real. Because she's like, I don't like all the stuff that's going on. Yeah. And he was like, no, you ain't going because you ain't had to. Now, he, Vietnam vet, but this is what he's saying. Yeah. This is what you're saying. The youth, that gener this generation is not, they seeing what's going on. They want to be a part of it. And then just think how silly and small it is for you to not like somebody because of their color. They, they don't even see race the same. <laughs> I listen to it. I listen to it with my nine-year-old in right. class and 50-50 right. right. in the school. Yeah. They don't see it that way. Right. They really don't. They, right. they, they can't fact, Yeah, they yeah. can't figure out what was wrong with y'all. White boys, the little white boys doing reports on Barack Obama. That's right. their favorite president because mm -hmm. that's the president. They, this is, they, they don't see it. Or their favorite quarterback is black. Of course, yeah, like the Ravens is black. Yeah, it's yeah. all they don't they, they don't see it the same. Because yeah. I no. talk to her, she doesn't see no, it. No, no, I agree one hundred percent. They don't. They don't. They don't see it the same, and they don't. They don't know what was wrong with y'all. I mean, yes. When they're gonna get older, they're gonna. What the hell was wrong with y'all? I tried to explain to her about not her grandparents not being able to have the friends that she has right. and doing the activities she does. <laughs> that's why the older people are so in awe about it. Right. She's like, well, that's dumb. What do you mean I, I can't be friends with Kate? Right. You mean me and Kate can't <laughs> play at the ball in the gap? What do you mean? Like, right, right. Like, I can't drink from a water fountain and can't drink from a water fountain. <laughs> She's like, that's dumb. That, who made that ruler? Like, yeah, who made that? That's really, hey, man. This is why our jobs seem hard, but it, it's not. It's, I think the wave, it, we stick out because it looks like that we're going to catch all uh, the flack and that. I don't, I think the wave, we keep doing this and we don't know that wave may come tomorrow, may come next month, but that wave is coming. That's a wave that's coming and it's going to sweep all of that ignorance and stuff away because the people that if your daughter is seven or eight or nine or ten now in another ten years they're going to be grown right and we still getting started i won't be but 80 something years old they be sweep, sweeping it away just because and none of the people I, you know like we used to listen to all black music and uh my kids my sons might, but my daughters, they listen to everybody. Adele and all of the old people, you know what I mean? This is three years ago, and then and, and, and they say, y'all, uh, so I say, I play like, yeah, put some of that on. You know, and then, uh, I mean, they can't listen to Jimmy Reed and all them old people, old, old country blues, and I tell them about that stuff. They said that is because the subject of music, because sometimes they make fun of the old Negro spirituals. And I said, those are for reasons. I said, listen to what they were saying. I said, that was revolutionary music at that time. I said, they might have been moaning and groaning because that's what they had to pretend to do. Wade in the water, you know. God's going to trouble water, right? And all that stuff, go down, steal away, steal away home, steal away to Jesus. Okay, the, the railroad is coming by tonight, underground railroad. Wade in the water, go up the river. Do not get out of the water until you're 100 miles away. 
Cause the dogs can't smell you in the water. Been talking about dumb Negroes in Louisiana. Them turpentine trees. Turpentine would drip on the grass. Cows would eat the grass when they go to the bathroom. There's turpentine in that. You can't, dogs can't smell turpentine. Negroes stuff, stump his feet in that doo-doo and take on off. Cause he didn't have a PhD or nothing, but he knew something, right? In other words, we, yeah, what we can contribute is directing people in the right way. And we always say not controlling, uh, you know what I mean, but uh, what did we call it? We want to influence the direction of change. Influence, not, you know what I mean? So anyway, let me kind of wrap up here. I was saying a while ago about the Negro and his forgiveness. He's forgiven everybody. In Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta, the Burning Spear, forgave the white folks in the 61. His acceptance speech was that of acceptance. Mandela, his speech or his speeches were the same. So he could forgive white folks. They had to, what did they have that stuff they was called? Truth and reconciliation. Truth. I was, you yeah, go ahead. Oh, you go, you made your No, I was just going, I was over there during that period, coming back and forth. No, what I was going to say, I heard somebody, uh, some organizations here in the U.S talking about having the same thing, or they've already done it. Having truth and reconciliation. Uh, For America? In, in America. In America, you know what? Uh, They're already doing it. They're just not going to have truth and reconciliation for me and you. Ain't nobody going to forgive me and you. No niggas is going to forgive us. <laughs> no matter we roll eyes at them, but they're going to forgive white folks. That's right. That's Boss man put it in the Negro. He got it in him and ain't nothing. There's no sense staying up at night, you know what I mean, and <laughs> beating we're, we're yourself. Way to one doing the forgiveness. We're going to, and going to look like we, uh, you know, we got another generation or so of it in us. But in the long run, from our book, that's basically what it talks about. It talks about forgiveness. It talks about and, and in making a new world, if we don't, if we have too much killing and revenge and all that, you'll never get to making peace and tranquility. You just won't get to it. Okay, I don't want to talk too much. I, I'll just go over this again later. So, uh, yeah. Remember, that this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to suggest to our brothers uh, these type of programs. We can do them on Zoom. However they would, but it should be a sponsoring element that handles that, you know. So maybe one of the official or, or maybe some of the ones that this year, uh, we don't say. I think it would be better with some of the brothers that was familiar with this stuff, because I don't think Ikna and Isna is almost ready for this right now. They might be getting close, but I don't think that they're ready. But there's no loss in this because a lot of my education came from all of these articles that printed and distributed. Can you imagine going to those tables and tables of lectures? I used to just go right down and collect two or three of all of them and bring them back here. All the conferences overseas, all the conferences everywhere. That's where I would say a lot of the familiarity that we have with East global issues come from all of this. Okay, uh, so, are there any questions or any comments about anything that was said?
Um, could you give a, you know, kind of restate again your, your position with uh, Iranians and some of the history there uh, with them? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is about Iranian with the Iranians, and she is with. Uh, Technically, we would have to put it like uh, the revolution because now they call it the Iranian revolution, but before it was the Islamic revolution in Iran. And then the discussion came up whether it's Iran and Islam or Islam and Iran or Iran and Iran, or the words Iranians for Iranians. And that's been a discussion for a long time. Uh, we would just like to say that uh, the Shia community in general, we've had very good relations with the Shia community. So much so that we don't, we don't, uh, technically I don't have a Madhav, I'm not a Hanafi, Maliki, Shah, um, just a Muslim, and I found no reason to change Madhavs or anything else. Uh, in the beginning, it was the line of the Imam, you know, Imam Khomeini, because Imam Khomeini was the first. Shia Muslim, not the first. He was a part of a group uh, or uh, the ulama that uh, politicized Islam and Shiism. Because Shiism was founded on, like uh, you, that Imam Mahdi is to come and establish the 12th Imam to establish the Islamic State. You know, like the Jews have that the Messiah has to come. And instead, like the curly-headed wearing Jew, they believe that the Messiah got to come. And he saw what the Messiah, that the big time Messiah will come. And until the Messiah comes, they say that technically, the diaspora that the Jews is in is a punishment from God, and they don't want it. They, they, they can't, the, the, the Zionists that they hate, they hate the Zionists, you know, and the Zionists hate them. They said they can't, they can't establish the state. They can't. That, the weird, that, that was our punishment for not being ready. God gave us something, and we weren't ready, and so we have to kind of uh, bear the burden for a while, then God's going to come, or they don't say God, they say the Almighty will come and do such, okay, and she is a little different than the, the Sunnis always, for a long time, they had caliphate. And no matter what happened, they had a, a political structure. And the political structure technically did not go away until 1924 when the Ottoman Empire collapsed and Freemasons got told there, I had a Turk and all of them, and they changed it from the Caliphate or Islamic rule to secularism. So Imam Khomeini comes and he establishes, well, he took over at Qom, the biggest happening in Shiism. Instead of going along to get along, he brought this big time Islam. And they, you know, they, he used to have a saying, my siyasa is my dean, and my dean is my siyasa. My politics is my religion, and my religion is my politics. They said that you can't mix siyasa, dean, politics, and dean. So anyway, 
from here, when the revolution happened, there was still a big group of uh, Shias left. And if you remember the statement from back in the 80s on the papers I just read, the biggest supporters of Islamic Republic in America and outside of Iran were Sunnis. not Shias. The Shias, I, I can't talk about the, the marches of the big leaders. Uh, uh, they didn't agree with uh, Imam Khomeini on uh, Islamic State. And they never solved that problem to the day. Me being a Sunni, I realized they got a problem. What are they going to do with my region? I mean, uh, the, they have, let's say, five or six big leaders in Shias around the world. And you can choose whichever one you want to follow, you know, that type of thing. And they've always existed. They've been a, a beacon light for Shias. They kept it together. They did a good job. But after you have an Islamic State, now what are you going to do with that position of Marajah, Marajiyat? Well, of course, we're common Muslims, and we would whisper it every now and then, but we do not have anything near the qualifications. We might have a sense, but to even touch that subject, In fact, there's certain things that we were to even mention certain things about a margin, a margin, almost any margin, you're going to find some Shias are going to be mad at you and they're going to be real mad at you. Who the hell are you? You know, you're common, not only you're just black, that's one thing, but you're just, that's, you know, margin talk to me, that's a pretty big fella. You don't get any bigger than that in Shiism, except uh, uh, the 12th Imam is coming back, Raja, he's going to be back. And the thing about the Hadith on those subjects, Sunnis believe that Imam Mahdi is going to come. He's going to come. And all the Hadith is clear on that. Okay, the Shias believe he was already born, and he's in occultation, you know, hidden guy, and he's going to come back.